<laughs> it's true. All right, so we are going to explore, does not sound exciting, explore vertical and horizontal stretches, and then we're going to combine some transformations together, and then I'll go over some homework questions that you should have questions on um, to explain how to do some of these overall transformations. So, vertical and horizontal stretches are the last type of transformation. We've got a horizontal versus vertical. Horizontal, remember, goes in this direction. So the direction of the x-axis is this way. That's a horizontal line. So horizontal lines, x-axis, affects the x value. That's how you can remember it. Notice that the factor that you used to know vertical and horizontal stretches and shrinks as dilations with a scale factor back in your first year of algebra. Um, and so that's what this C is, is the scale factor that we either stretch or shrink a particular graph with. And so, because it's horizontal, x-axis affecting the x-value, the x-value is inside the function. So we need to take that um, factor and do something to the x. And to get the proper stretch or shrink, we need to divide the x inside the function by that particular factor. And so I'll show you what that looks like in just a minute. Versus the vertical stretch, which vertical y-axis is a vertical line, so it affects the y value. Remember your y value is the whole function. That means we do it to the outside. So anytime it's vertical, we had vertical translations up or down, it was always to the outside. Horizontal, right, left, was always to the inside. So that's one way to remember how it works. Notice that your C <coughs> is being multiplied to the outside of the function. On both of these, if you have a stretch, C is going to be greater than 1. Any number greater than 1. If it's a shrink, C is going to be less than 1, like 1 half, 1 third, 1 fifth, 2 fourths. Oh, that's one half. Two fifths. Um, your C will never, ever, ever be negative. If your C is negative, that negative relates to the um, reflection over the x axis or the y axis. So never view C as negative because that negative is that reflection. We talked about reflections yesterday. Okay. Let's look at just the function. And I'm going to apply all of this to the function of x squared. You can apply to any function, but we're applying it to x squared so that you can kind of have an idea of what's going on. So I'm going to put into my calculator just the regular x squared functions with my problem. If I, and let's just take a, a C of 4, let's say our C is 4. If I am going to do a horizontal stretch, I'm going to take x and divide it by 4. So our example, I'm going to put the example O over here. Let's say that C is 4. That means that in this, I have to take x divided by 4. And square. <coughs> this is going to create a stretch. If you think about a vertical line, if I stretch, or I'm sorry, a horizontal line, if I stretch it this way. So if I take this parabola, looks like this. If I stretch it this way, what's going to happen to the arms of that parabola? Are they going to go closer to the x-axis or closer to the y-axis? If I pull this, aren't those arms going to come closer to the x-axis? So I'm grabbing a hold of those arms and I'm stretching it horizontally. That's what a horizontal stretch is. So I'm taking this and stretching it horizontally. The graph is going to get longer this way. Okay? So my hypothesis is that it gets closer to the x-axis. And these are not things that you remember. You just know by understanding what a horizontal stretch is. So let's see if that's true. So let's put in here um, parentheses x divided by 4 squared. Is 
that would happen. Yeah. <coughs> All right, well, what if my factor is less than 1? So instead of 4, let's use 1 4. C is equal to 1 4. That means x is being divided by 1 4. Would you normally divide x by 1 fourth? How would you actually write that? x divided by 1 fourth is the same as x. Instead of division, we multiply by the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of 1 fourth is 4. So doesn't this really mean, whoops, this puts my 4 in front, 4 x squared is not the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and put into my calculator uh, the x divided by 1 fourth just to let you see it's the same thing. I'll change it to 4x squared. Um, so let's think about this. What's going to happen? I'm going to take this and I'm going to squeeze it because I'm shrinking it. So instead of pulling it out, I'm going to squeeze it this way. What's going to happen to the arms of that problem? They're going to go up because I'm squeezing it this way. They're going to go up and get closer to the y axis. I'm stretching it it pulls out and I get closer to the x-axis. When I push it in, it's going to get closer to that y-axis. So, closer to y-axis. So let's put in here, parentheses x divided by parentheses 1 divided by 4, and parentheses, parentheses again, squared. So that's x divided by a quarter, squared. There's the original, and there's the shrink. So it didn't get close to that y-axis. So it shrunk horizontally. It went in horizontally. All right, well, what happens with vertical stretches and shrinks? Did you put something wrong? Let me see your calculator. Yours looks skinnier? No, oh, mine does? So let's see what you put into your y equals. Oh, uh, because you did 4x squared okay. instead of in parentheses 4x squared. Oh, all right. So then if I change this, let's go back um, to, remember here we said, okay, it's 4x squared, but in parentheses. Because when I square that, don't I really get 16x squared? Yeah. And that's why. So if I did 4x squared, it should still look the same. And there's a good chunk. Does that same thing? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Thank you for doing that. Um, so you could also put 16x squared in and you get exactly the same graph. So you've got three ways you could write it. I personally, it's nice to see it that way because when you see the 1 fourth, you know it's a shrink. When you see the 4 inside the function, because notice that's inside the square, when you see the 4 inside the function but being multiplied to x, it's not actually greater than 1. So you have to be careful. That's why the horizontal is more difficult. Because it's supposed to be, when it's inside, being divided by. So that's the hard thing for you to remember is that, oh, okay, multiplying by 4 really is dividing by 1 4. So um, what if I divided by 4? Remember how that was greater than 1? And it ended up with that stretch going down. So be careful. That's the hard one. Vertical stretches are shrinks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this parabola and I'm going to stretch it this way vertically. What's going to happen to the arms of that parabola stretching vertically? Closer to the y-axis or the x-axis? Closer to the y-axis because I'm taking them and stretching them longer, right? So I anticipate <coughs> that when I have a factor stretching greater than 1, I'm going to get closer to the y-axis. So isn't that just the reverse of the stretch for the horizontal? Because we're stretching them in different directions. What are you okay. um, So my example might be, let's go ahead and still use a c that's 4. Notice that we're multiplying it to the outside of the function this time. So that 4 goes outside the function, and that's what you were just showing me in your calculator earlier. That's that vertical stretch, it's not going to necessarily be identical to this one here. They're not the same equation. They look similar. But this is still going to stretch it. Does 
So let's see what that looks like. So I, this time I have 4x squared. So it's outside the function. There's the original. And there's that stretch. So it did get closer to the y-axis. Not as close as the horizontal stretch. Or, uh, sorry, the horizontal shrink. Not as close as that one. But it's still closer than the original. And then if we have a factor that's less than 1, like 1 fourth, we're still going to multiply that out to the front. 1 fourth x squared. But you've got to put that 1 fourth in parentheses only. And so I, what, what do you hypothesize is going to happen? Closer to the x-axis. And here's why. If I'm going to shrink, so I'm going to push on this, this way, what's going to happen to those, those arms of that parabola? If I push on it this way, aren't they going to open up? So if I take and squish it, those arms are going to open up. So it makes sense against the x-axis. So make it visual so you don't have to memorize everything. Think of it visually. And so let's go ahead and put that in. So I've got parentheses, 1 divided by 4, and then the x squared is on the outside. So there's the original. And then there's the shape. And again, it's not as close to the x-axis as the stretch was for the horizontal, but it's still laying down. So that's something you have to study. I personally think about it visually so I don't have to remember so much. I'm not real big on memorization. Questions on that before we do the equations. Does that make sense to you? You're going to forget about the time you go home and do your homework, trust me. Alright, so example five. You are given the equation or the function x cubed minus 16x. And you have to find equations for the following non rigid transformations. Remember, non rigid means that the shape has changed. The only thing we've done here that's changed shapes are the stretches and shrinks. So, we are going to find oh it's in my pocket that it's fine on. Here it is. Alright, so if I want a vertical stretch by a factor of three, vertical stretch, I'm pulling it this way so it's affecting the Y. So it's affecting the Y is on the outside of the inside. Outside, that's how I remember things. So my vertical stretch means I'm going to take my factor of 3 and I'm going to multiply it to the function. I'm going to multiply it to the outside of the function, which is a vertical stretch of 3. So my function is this. So I've got 3 parentheses, or I'm going to do that with like that, x cubed minus 16x. You're going to want to distribute that 3 in. And so you end up with 3 times x cubed. 3 times negative 16 is negative 48x. So this equation right here would be the vertical stretch of the original function by a factor of 3. Looking at this equation, it would be hard for you to tell other than the fact that you could factor 3 out. I won't make you go from here to tell me what the vertical stretch is. I'll have you go exactly what this is saying. Here's the function, here's the factor, here's the equation. Horizontal shrink. Horizontal, there's a horizontal line. It affects what value, x or y. x, inside or outside. Inside. And so you do have to know that a horizontal shrink is division inside. And so we have our f of is our x is being divided by a factor of one half. So doesn't that really mean that I'm taking my function and instead of dividing by a half, because I think there's a nightmare, what are we going to end up doing? So x times the reciprocal makes it a 2x inside. So that just means I'm going to replace every x in the function with a 2x. So my function something cubed minus 16 times something. 
So inside here, I'm putting in a 2x. Because that's what's in here. Now do the math. 2 cubed, 8, x cubed, x cubed. 16 times 2, negative 32x. So this represents the horizontal shrink. And I would expect my graph to go this way. So if I have a graph that's, and this isn't this graph, but doesn't the, doesn't the cube function look something like this? Or if it has some loops in there, right? It could even look like this, right? If I were to stretch that graph, would you ex what would you expect this to look like? You get a pull on the strings this way, right? So wouldn't it, wouldn't it go closer to the y-axis or closer to the x-axis with a vertical stretch? Well, I was actually on the right track. Wouldn't it go like this? And stretch out and pull it that way. It should bring it closer to the y-axis. Whereas a horizontal shrink, wouldn't that be the same thing? If I take this one and I squish it together this way, and wouldn't it come closer together also? Whereas a horizontal stretch, it would pull this out and wouldn't it almost kind of become straightened out a little bit? It would get closer and closer to that x-axis if it was a horizontal stretch. So those are the kind of things you want to think about. And you can check that on your calculator. All right, so any questions on that before we put several transformations together? All right, last example. We're going to do these transformations in the exact order that they ask. So we're going to start with the graph y equals x squared. We're going to undergo three different transformations. And then we're going to come to a conclusion afterwards. So pay attention. If you don't know the graph of y equals x squared, what should you do? Well, okay, you won't have a calculator. What would you say? Except plug in plug in values for x, right? So if you don't know that the vertex is at 0, 0, well, you should. Because you're supposed to know the basic graph, right? And start at plugging in values for x. x is, if x is 1, square it, y is 1. If x is 2, square it, y is 4. If x is negative 1, square it, you get 1. And negative 2, square it, you get 4. Now don't connect those dots because we are going to take f of x equals x squared, and we are going to create an equation. So the first transformation is a horizontal shift two units to the right. Horizontal, I think a horizontal line, does that affect x or y? Horizontal line looks like the x-axis, so it affects x. If you're taking notes, you can't fall asleep. So it affects the x-axis. Is that inside or outside? Inside. Inside. So Inside the function, this is the function. So we're going to take f of x equals, here's our square, there's our x inside the function. We are moving it two units to the right. Is inside same sign or opposite sign? No, not same sign. Inside's opposite sign. Remember that um, the equation of the circle where the signs change when you put the center in? It's a way to remember it. Um, so right is normally... Um, a positive, so we're going to put a minus 2 in there. And you can check it on your calculator. If you won't have a calculator in this portion, it'll be hard to check. So um, graphically, I can just move each of those points two units to the right. So I'm going to move the vertex to the right, each of these points to the right. And I am going to fill that in. So that graph right there represents x minus 2 squared. Then our next, so that's our first one, our next one is a stretch factor of 3, a vertical stretch. So they told you they want a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. Did they have to tell you it was stretch? No. Because you should know it's a stretch because the factor is 3. If the factor were 1 third, then you'd know it's a shrink. So vertical stretch means we're pulling it this way vertically. So are we expecting it to get closer to the y-axis or the x-axis? The y-axis. So we should expect to see it closing in when we graph it. Um, if it's vertical, is it affecting the x or the y? Y is vertical, right? 
So is that inside or outside? Outside. Outside this. Let's talk about this. Well, yes. We're going to put, yeah, this one will work this way. So f of x is equal to, we want to go outside the function. Since something's already happening to x, in other words, we have the minus 2 in there, You definitely want those parentheses. You are not going to distribute the 3 into a squared binomial. You can't do that. Now, how are we going to graph that? Well, first question. Does a vertical stretch or shrink or horizontal stretch or shrink change where the graph is placed? In other words, does it move the graph? Move it? No. It's going to stretch it, but the vertex, which is a key point, should stay exactly where it's at. Max and min can get stretched, but something like a vertex, I know that's a min, that's going to stay where it's at. So, if I were you, I would be putting an xy table if you had to graph it. And I would take the x value of my vertex first. I want to make sure I wrote that equation correctly. The x value of that vertex is 2. So if I put 2 in here, I've got 2 minus 2 is 0, squared is 0 times 3 is 0. Did my vertex change? No. So that works. That's good. Then to the left of 2 is an x value of 1. So I'm going to put in 1. 1 minus 2 is going to be 2. Squared is 1 times 3 is 3. So I'm going to plot 1, 3. So this point that was here at 1, 1, it just got stretched to 1, 3. It got stretched to 2 units. Then I'm going to put in, um, if I put in 0, look what happens. 0 minus 2, negative 2, squared is 4, 4 times 3 is 12. No. Is that right? No. So I put in 0, 0 minus 2 is negative 2, squared, 4, yeah, 12, right? I'm not crazy. Will that fit? No. no. So it'd be like way up here somewhere, which makes sense because it's getting skinnier, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So I don't want to put that one in there. What about to the right of 2, which is 3? So let's put 3 in. So 3 minus 2 is 1, squared 1, times 3 is 3. So that one gets put there. So that's as far as we're going to go with that one. So it did get skinnier, didn't it? Slightly. Then, so that's that one. Then our vertical translation, five units up. I can just graphically move each of those three points five units up. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to take this vertex here at 2, 0, and move it up five. We're going to take this point at 1, 3, and move it up five. We have to go slightly off, but that's okay. And at uh, 3, 1, or 3, 3. Did it change the shape of this graph? No. It just moved it, which is what we expected. It just moved it up. So let's take this right here, this function, f of x equals, here's our vertical stretch of 3 times x minus our, our horizontal movement to the right of 2 squared. We went vertically up. Vertically up affects x or y. Y. So is that inside or outside? Outside the function. So we need to put, and is it same sign or different signs? Same sign. So we need to put that plus 5 on the outside of the function. So here's that graph right there. What was that? Because they told us to do a vertical translation five units up. So that was our last translation. So questions on how I did that. Let's do it in reverse and see if it makes any difference. We'll go a lot quicker in reverse. <laughs> no, please don't. <laughs> so again, here's my original. This time we're going to go from the bottom up. So vertical translation, five units up. So we're just going to take every one of those points now we're going to move it up 5.
So the shape of the graph did not change, it just went up. Does that affect the vertical up? Does that affect x or y? Vertical. Y. Inside or outside? Outside, outside is y. Same sign or different sign? Same sign. So my original function is x squared this time. Correct. So that was my original function. What? Every time. Yeah. Because it's outside, we want to put the plus 5 on the outside. The function's x squared. The next one we have to kind of think about is the next one is the vertical stretch. So do we write the vertical stretch? Because it's a vertical, it's outside, isn't it? And it's affecting the y. Do we put parentheses here and put a 3 in front, or do we just do 3x squared plus 5? That's your one morning? What is that in your hand? What, Colin? What is that? Is that all you're doing? It totally looks like you're looking down at your cell phone. He's like this. Isn't that the cell phone look? It is. I know. <laughs> that's why I'm like, that's like the skinniest cell phone ever. So here's my point. If I have my main function is this, f of x equals. Do we put that vertical stretch? Are you looking at this as being the function and you're putting it on the outside? Or... Are you putting on the outside of just x squared plus 5 because the x squared is the function and the plus 5 is outside and the 3 goes on the outside? So think of it this way. It'll help you to remember. Does a vertical stretch change the placement of the graph? In other words, does the graph move up, down, right, or left with a vertical stretch? No. It just changes the shape. Is this going to move the graph? If you were to simplify this and distribute that 3 in there, wouldn't you get 3 times x squared? This would give you a 3x squared. 3 times 5 is plus 15. Won't that theoretically move the graph up to 15 from the original? We don't want to move it. So, we don't want that one. We want the bottom one. So here we go. sure my computer's plugged in. I don't want my computer to die on me. Yay. Okay. So here's how we're going to write our equation. We need the equation in order to plug in numbers. f of x is equal to our stretch is 3 x squared and then our plus 5 is on the outside. So let's see if we plug in numbers if it keeps it in the same place but just stretches it. So I expect it to get skinnier because it's a vertical stretch this way. So x, y, how do I choose my points? Correct. Yeah, look at the last one. And I want to start with my vertex because I don't want my vertex to move. The other points are going to move, but the vertex needs to stay the same. The x, y, that vertex is 0. Plug in 0 here, 0 squared is 0, times 3, 0, plus 5, Five. Did it move? Nope, so that's exactly what I wanted. If we had used the other one, it would have been all the way up to 15 and it would never have fit on the graph, which would be bad. All right, then to the left of uh, 0 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1, times 3 is 3, plus 5 is 8. So we're going to be at negative 1, 8. That just moves us a little bit off. And then positive 1 is also going to give us 8. So did my graph get skin, skinnier but stay in the same place? Yes. The other two points here, there's no way they're going to fit on the graph. Because if I plug in negative 2 and 2, it's going to be way too big. So we're skipping those. So far, my equations look vastly different, don't they? Let's look at the last one. So the last one is the horizontal shift two units to the right. So horizontal shift affects x or y? x, 
the inside or outside? Inside. The inside. Inside the x squared, because it has to affect that x. So I'm going to write f of x equals, look at the magical transformation, 3 times x squared plus 5. It is a shift to the right, so inside it changes signs. So normally right is positive, so we're going to make it negative. And if I shift each of these points to the right, 2, there's the vertex, and here's the other two points. What do you notice about these two graphs? They're identical. What do you notice about the two equations? They are identical. So what is your conclusion about the order of transformations? It doesn't matter what order. So on the test, you want the equation and the graph? I will give you the graph and you have to come up with the equation. Or I'll give you the equation and you have to come up with the graph. Um, or I'll give you the equation and you have to describe. What is happening like this? No, it could be a cubed. It could be it could be a square root function. It could be an absolute value function. So those are the four I would probably give you. X squared, x cubed, square root, or absolute value. Those are typically the four I would choose. I find those fair. You should know those basic ones how to graph and move. Okay? Alright, so any other questions on that? So please write yourself a note that these are the same. Doesn't matter. So could we have started with a vertical stretch? Yeah. So my point is you can always put these in there no matter what. So if you've got f of x equals, you're going to have something here for a vertical stretch, if anything. Parentheses x plus or minus something inside squared plus or minus something on the outside. This is your vertical stretch or shrink. That's your vertical stretch or shrink. Couldn't we have, and I'm not probably going to do this to you, but couldn't we have x divided by something here? And wouldn't this be your horizontal stretch? We can look at that or shrink. So if something's happening, if, if there's a coefficient in front of the x inside here, that's a shrink or a stretch. Or if something's being divided, it's a shrink or a stretch. It depends on whether it's greater than one or less than one. You have to think in terms of its division and not really multiplication. Then this becomes what? What's this number here for? Mm. Horizontal shift. And then, well, I don't know why I put a five there, but it should be a blank. It's not going to always be a five, right? So that should be a blank. Plus or minus blank. Um, so this right here would be your vertical shift. Now the only thing we haven't talked about would be a negative. What if there's a negative here? What would that mean? It's outside, right? Outside affects y. So with reflections, it's always the opposite thing. So if it affects y, we can reflect over the x-axis. That's how we learned it. If the x is negative, and usually you'll see the x is being negative, um, this would be written as 2 minus x. Or negative 2 minus x in this case. Because if we still want that same shift, it would be negative 2 minus x. So my point is if the x is negative, x is negative, it's inside. Inside affects the x. So we want to uh, reflect over the other axis, so we reflect over the y-axis. So those are the only two that could be in there. I don't want to put them in there because it will jump it all up, but don't forget that study. Right. Any other questions? Jason? This is 1 to F6. You should be able to finish it. And I purposely gave you a lot of, I purposely kept the questions in 1 to F6 because you need the practice. You need the practice, you need to come with questions tomorrow. Okay. Um, one or two isn't going to do it.